Well guys, welcome to the channel again, I'm David, as you know, subscribe, remember. Today, Lucy's got a test today and uh, Lucy's a bit nervous, mm. but that's normal. Um, sometimes guys, nerves do affect us and they can interfere with your thinking and you know, so... Sometimes a lot of people will say when you get through the first five minutes or so, then everything's used to settle down. A lot of people would say try and take deep breaths, hold it and let it out slowly. But that's so easy to say, sitting here in the armchair, yeah, uh, while we're watching people panicking and tests. But um, I'm confident uh, Lucy will pass her test easily if she just keeps herself... Um, and just takes it as it comes, because really at the end of the day we're only really dealing with what's ahead. And following the instructions, keeping the car legal and safe, and uh, a lot of people would think, well, that's not an awful lot to ask for. But it's not easy when you're doing it when you've got someone sitting beside you watching you, and you know assessing. And that's where it can be. So there's a lot to be said for the examiners to try and relax us. Yeah. Yeah. Anything you want to uh, say? No, I don't. I feel confident, okay. nervous, but confident. Ah. <laughs> yeah, I know. Anyway, guys, we're going to wish Lucy all the best and see how Lucy gets on after the test. Hello, everyone, and of course, we're here again. I'm going to be in the background as usual. And uh, what I want to talk about today is just the planning and awareness that you would normally do. Uh, this is the footage of a real test. This is late August, of course, 24th of August, I think it was. As you can see, um, it's a fine day. And uh, hopefully the weather stays like it is. And I'm going to be in the background doing some awareness and planning issues and running fast forward in some other areas. But um, we'll get back to the video and we'll watch what uh, Lucy's doing. We can't actually see her observations and see what mirror she's checking and stuff like that. But I can be in the background telling you what she should be doing. Anyway, she's going to be stopped here on the hill. Anyway, a wee hill start at the beginning of the test. And let's see if she gets on. And uh, I'll get back to you through... The, the rest of the, the video. Okay, guys. So on this particular occasion, uh, the examiner has reminded uh, Lucy that not to worry if she blocks her driveway. This will happen occasionally, guys, when uh, the examiners are want to actually specifically position you for maybe a manoeuvre like an uphill start or a angle start behind the car. So as you see there, Lucy moved off pretty well there. She didn't roll all the way back down the hill. And uh, it's a bit panicky. Uh, as soon as you start your test, you're on a hill start. So that's uh, a bit of pressure on you. Now, again, the footage of these tests is going to introduce planning. And as you can see ahead, we've got vehicles uh, coming into the road. We've got vehicles delivering goods. You've got shops on the right-hand side. You've got speeds that you're going to be looking out for. And you've got the white lines there for the end of the road. Remember, guys... When you're approaching these junctions, I did a little short about the take the gear and uh, do a little steer and then check to see if it's clear. Keeping these little routines will help you emerge from junctions. Um, when it's clear, you're going into the new road and you're checking your interior mirror and you're now making progress in the road. So we know it's 30, so we need to try our best. If the route is clear and it's safe to do so, is to demonstrate that we can get to the speed of the road. Okay, so hazard ahead, guy. Make sure there's no oncoming traffic. Check your interior and your right mirror before you make any movement. Now, a signal is not always necessary, guys. Here, we are stopping at the traffic lights. So of course, you can see the keep clear sign there. And Lucy's done the right thing and not stopped inside that area. So you're going to use these little keep clear signs. You might not have them in your area, but if you do, uh, just use them as you would normally a yellow box junction everyone so a little chat about areas activity um, this is doing well here she's spotted the hazard and uh, the active area and checked her mirrors and slowed down keeping away from the vehicle in front now if you can imagine in areas like this um, you're always going to be pretty close to maybe oncoming cars depending on how tight the road is parked vehicles imagine if your both doors were open and uh, would you go through that area if you would, then fine. You can probably continue at your normal speed. But if you feel that you would, doors would hit 
uh, either oncoming vehicles or parked cars, bring your speed down to a safe speed. You should always be able to stop short of any obstruction that might pop in front of you. You think the pedestrian in the green jumper might walk across the road in front of you? You should never really, good drivers, never really get taken by surprise. You should always be able to anticipate the problem. So at this point, uh, Lucy's been asked to pull up on the left, so always make sure you check your interior mirror first, guys. Check your left mirror and find a safe place. And um, Once you've realised where you're going to stop, give a good signal and stop safely. Of course, use your handbrake here, guys. Uh, the examiner will probably just ask you to move off again. So I always instruct first gear first, uh, use your mirrors, and uh, once you're satisfied, nothing can interfere with your movement. Uh, look over your shoulder for your final blind spot check, give a signal, and release your handbrake and make progress on the road. Because if you've already correctly selected a gap in the traffic and moved off, then the vehicle behind you might make up progress on you. And uh, provided you're making progress, is fine. But if you're not making progress, then you may cause that vehicle behind you to slow down or change direction. Therefore, you're the hazard and will be a fault on our driving test. So at the junction, uh, Lucy's been informed to turn right, and when you can see a green filter associated with a green light, and then it ensures you that oncoming traffic should have a red light, and therefore you should have a free turn. So when you see a, a green filter arrow, um, then you should proceed in the direction of the arrow only. Now, I'm going to keep it at normal speed for the moment, uh, everyone, because there is an instruction you can sometimes get in a driving test where the examiner might tell you that uh, up on the left there are two uh, junctions quite close together and I would like you to take the second one on the left. Now when you hear a command like this, uh, guys, it's really a prompt to ensure that the timing your signal is right. It's about checking your mirrors, of course, and getting your speed down and then just signaling just after the first one for the second one. So these are uh, advanced instructions. Of course, new road, new rules, so we're 20 mile an hour. Park cars, so of course we've checked our right mirror. And uh, we'll be going along and we'll be asked to pull up on the left. In this case, Lucy will have been instructed uh, to stop her car uh, about one car length from the vehicle that's parked. So again, maybe be instructed to... Uh, Ignore any driveways that might be there at that time. Uh, this is a particular manoeuvre. We call it an angle start, guys. It's just to ensure that you can move off relatively close to a vehicle in front of you safely. So from this point, uh, Lucy has been asked to follow the sat navigation for some time, driving independently, uh, receiving directions from the sat navigation. Now, remember, you probably will be instructed uh, to never rely on the speeds that are shown on the sat navigation system. It's, it's quite simply because they're all recorded previously, these routes, and uh, they're not updated to current conditions. So uh, any problems with the, the, the sat nav and the examiner will help you, and you must ask. the end of the road to your guys uh, Lucy's been asked to turn right and uh, you can see the solid hatch markings down here on the left in the corner protecting the pedestrians uh, these can cause problems if you are not paying attention to the road signs and markings guys now the camera angle is not very good here uh, as you can see um, but it is quite a challenging right turn <laughs> Something here when you ask to turn right at a junction, sometimes your turning point, as you can see, the centre of the new road is just a little bit further on. Uh, be careful uh, that when you are turning right, guys, that you check where your turning point is before you start steering. At 
this point, Lucy's shown excellent observations in the car uh, ahead, and she's pulling in in anticipation of maybe having to hold back and wait. But after seeing the car moving out of the road, she promptly reacts and continues making progress. So that was a good example of uh, observations and planning. Now this is a good example of root knowledge. Um, Lucy's came in early. The bus lane sign was quite well ahead in advance. So uh, some students don't actually come over until they see the sign round about now and start coming over. But that time somebody could already be in there before you. So uh, Lucy's came in really early. So that's a good example of uh, route knowledge. If you were asked to follow the road ahead here in Lanark Road, you wouldn't have used the bus lane on the left. You would have stayed on the right hand side because this is a compulsory left turn at the junction. Now, a little word of warning uh, in the situation that Lucy's in when she gets round the corner. Uh, the examiner has instructed Lucy to uh, turn right into Sainsbury's car park. However, she's also been told to disregard any instructions from the sat navigation because, of course, the sat navigation will, will probably be trying to get her to go ahead and uh, the sat navigation will start telling her to about turn and the sat navigation system will think she's gone in the wrong direction. So in this situation and other situations like it, if the examiner's taking you somewhere just to do a manoeuvre or something off the, the normal route, then they will inform you to disregard any instructions from the sat navigation. So you can see here that uh, there's a learner in front and Lucy's decided that she's going to pass because there doesn't seem to be any movement uh, in this vehicle so quite rightly uh, you pass the vehicle. It may be a good idea to give a signal and the learner could uh, see what your intentions are. well with the reverse bay park there and uh, Lucy's now been asked to turn right at the junction and to continue with the GPS instructions from there on. A little bit of a hill start here again guys um, and can be a little bit challenging and uh, of course especially when there's cars close behind you uh, it makes it even worse and uh, we can sort of panic a bit. I think the secret is just to try and keep the handbrake. If you've got a manual handbrake, uh, keep it on until you can feel a good pull going and then take the handbrake off slowly with your feet remaining still at that point. However, uh, each car, uh, I suppose, has got its own little uh, characteristics and your instructor will keep you right about that. So at the roundabout, Lucy's been asked to follow, to cross the roundabout third exit. Can you pick out the first exit on the sign? So as you can see, the third exit is actually ahead here. I've covered this in previous videos, guys, so go back to the channel and uh, have a look at some of these videos. It certainly will help. In about 200 yards at the roundabout, uh, Lucy's been asked to turn left first exit. Now, just up here, uh, approaching 
junctions like this and big roundabouts like that. Look for road signs and markings. A good example is on the left here. You can see that you can expect bus lanes and uh, times of stopping or waiting restrictions. And of course, on the right hand side, you've got the Joe Carriageway sign, which could give you an indication of speed. However, uh, make sure you see the sign and the speed restriction first before you uh, make progress up to the speed of the road. Okay guys, so there wasn't really much uh, anything interesting uh, between now and really getting up to the test centre, so I'm running it up here about four times the speed. There is one thing that occurred at the next roundabout. Uh, there was a slight, slight delay, uh, but this is Bankhead roundabout and it's quite notorious for uh, cars going round, with it being so small and cars coming round so quick and there's vehicles either side of you. There was a vehicle that did honk just about here and... Uh, yeah, well, they the thought that, you know, Lucy should have gone, but uh, at the end of the day, we'll wait and see what happens there. So, uh, yeah, so we'll see you at the test centre, and I hope you enjoy the, the fast forward four times the speed <laughs> between here and the test centre. Okay guys, so here we are and congratulations, Lucy's got her test today and passed with three minor faults, um, so congratulations. Thank you so much. That was amazing. How many hours do you think you did on in total? 30 something, maybe 35 with this five. Um, it doesn't matter, it's not a big deal, yeah. but you just take, you just think take 45, what it takes. 35, yeah. Okay, 35. Average amount. But anyway. What we'll say is uh, there was three minor faults. Um, for what I can remember, uh, you were a very bit fast on a 20, but you did correct it and you brought it back, but it was enough to give a minor fault there. That was on Longstone Road. Uh, the other one was uh, at the junction. Uh, the examiner did mention that someone hooted at the back. The Someone honked the horn at the back and... Uh, However, there was no opportunity to move out at that point, so it wasn't really a hesitation there. Maybe it was, uh, well, have a look at your your, yeah. your little thing. Yeah. And what was, uh, it was, oh yes, it was uh, a steering, the, yeah, and a, steering yeah. a steering, turning right. It was a sort of like, we call it a swan neck, which means you just steered a bit late and got a wee bit too close to the curb at the other side. But three minor faults is an excellent score, guys. So... That's it. I'm very pleased. Thank Good. You. Okay. So I'll see you again. Uh, take care. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Look after yourself. See you in the next time.